Thank you for joining me. My name is Lee Reams from ClientWise, and today's webcast is going to talk about some different strategies you can use before the upcoming tax season to help position your brand uh, more prominently and how to really utilize the power of reviews, uh, kind of the modern word of mouth to get more clients this upcoming tax season. So the first part of the uh, presentation is going to be about uh, the search results. So we're going to concentrate on Google since Google owns the uh, major part of the market share. And I'm going to walk through kind of what the search results look like, understand what the different sections are, how you can uh, position your own brand in these sections, uh, and then how to utilize this to get more leads and, and more importantly, to convert more referrals to your uh, practice. Uh, the next thing I'm going to talk about is citations. Uh, what are citations? Basically, they are the way your name, address, phone number, the information about you is found on the web through various properties. So the more consistent your citations, meaning your name is spelled the exact same way on multiple websites, the higher Google gives you in the algorithm and, and, and when they give their results. Um, the next thing I'm going to talk about is kind of the review uh, transformation on how now uh, getting endorsements really through reviews is uh, changing the way most of our customers, our, our website, our marketing customers are, are growing their practices. Those that concentrate on reviews um, dominate their market and uh, those that don't and still are afraid of it um, continue to struggle. So we'll also review um, how sites like Yelp and TaxBuzz can really help your your practice grow. Uh, the next item I'm going to address is uh, Google Plus and how Google Plus um, is part of the algorithm and how it is part of all the mapping and mobile devices and how people find you. And then from there, I'm going to get into the lead consolidator. So we're going to talk about reviews, but we're going to talk about the two best uh, lead consolidators right now, which is Yelp and uh, TaxBuzz.com. So uh, please stay uh, alert as much as you can. I know some of this can be boring for tax accountants when we're talking about marketing, but these are uh, some very easy to implement tips that can pay off uh, very big for you. It usually takes, we say, 90 days when you make changes to see it through the uh, uh, search results. So uh, get some paper out or uh, get ready to take some notes and we'll go through it. Let's start with the Google search engine results page. So uh, in the industry, we call this the SERP page, and it basically is broken down into various areas. And I'm just going to go over that real quick so uh, you get a general understanding of how it works and why your practice or your brand might be pushed off of page one with the, all the recent changes. So um, here I have Long Island CPA. Uh, at the top, uh, we have a little uh, yellow ad icon. This is going to show whatever Google pay-per-click advertisers are. Usually, you'll see a bunch here on the right side as well. Um, and then from there, uh, right below that, you'll start seeing uh, a few organic search results. So these are non-paid organic search results are clicked on more often than paid search. Uh, so a higher percentage of people come through here. The next block uh, here in the middle with the maps is the, the Google business pages, the Google Maps. So this is a key area that we'll discuss as we go um, uh, through this webcast about why Google Plus is so important to you. And you'll notice, obviously, the real estate they're taking has now pushed the organic results, which start here again after this line, further down the page. So luckily for us, our client uh, is Thomas Brown, CPA, in this uh, illustration. And they are uh, very prominent in Google Plus, very prominent here in the organic search. So if we go to another market, let's go to Dallas IRS tax problems. Here you're going to notice um, that we don't have the Google Plus or the mapping. Uh, we have uh, three ads, so a little more competitive pay-per-click market and a ton of ads here on the right side. Uh, and then you're going to see the organic search results. Um, again, uh, Fusion Tax Advisors is another client-wise client, very prominent on their search results for organic search. Uh, I'm going to go here to Burbank CPA. Um, this one, there's no organic at the top. Um, Google has now decided just to show its Google Plus, uh, the uh, local map pages, um, and some search results. And now if you uh, highlight over uh, the name, it will then drop down the information that it's feeding from Google Plus. So again, a, a big factor in what you're doing is getting your Google Plus to be as robust as possible to stand out, one, for ranking, and two, if a visitor comes here, you want them to get a good picture of you from this little snapshot. 
Um, on this page for Burbank, uh, California CPA, this is another competitive market. Our client here, Ara, we have him with his Google Plus page top, uh, his organic search results for his website number one, uh, and then lo and behold, he uses the Yelp strategy and has a lot of reviews. His Yelp listing is highly ranked as well. So you kind of get an idea is the more um, information or the more ads and the more Google Plus listings here, the farther you're going to see the organic search results fall. And the other thing you're going to start seeing is sites like Yellow Pages, uh, sites like TaxBuzz.com, White Pages. Um, these are not even local businesses. They're more of the consolidator directories, Thumbtack here, Yelp. And you're going to see that if, if these sites are taking this real estate up here at the top, um, all of the local businesses are going to be pushed farther and farther down the page. And that is why the strategies we're talking about today are so important. So basically, Google changes the way they show sites based on different uh, changes in their algorithm, different uh, market conditions with the AdWords, things like that. So it, you'll see that each market is different. So when we work with clients, we kind of review what does their market look like, what are their competitive issues, and then we kind of come up with a game plan um, to tackle that. So here's a market that's not as competitive. Um, our client is Russ Merrick, enrolled agent. Um, he has good placement here. Uh, we need to get him up in his Google Plus page, uh, but his tax buzz profile is also showing. So um, just a couple profiles or a couple different uh, ways that uh, this client now is kind of owning page one um, of their uh, search results. So the next thing I want to get into is why reviews matter so much. When we talk about reviews, we usually think about Yelp or websites like TaxBuzz that provide consumers the opportunity to say what they think about different professionals. So what has happened, um, just like any change in technology, is reviews now are relied on as a legitimate kind of referral word of mouth source for your business. So in the old days, you had clients refer uh, their colleagues or friends or family to you um, and you know, they basically called you and they became clients. So today, if the same referral uh, happens, it then takes on the research side of, you know, what do other people say about this firm? Um, and if people find you on the internet, what reviews do is kind of validate what you're saying on your website or in any of your website properties. So it has become crucial that you understand how reviews work. And instead of being afraid of them, um, work to make them an asset and they can become one of the biggest drivers. So uh, I'm on uh, San Jose Tax Preparation on Yelp and we have two clients here, uh, uh, Lena's tax team and the first tax service. These are client-wise clients. But what I want to do is just go into the reviews and actually read what people say about them. And what's interesting here is I found Lena by searching Yelp and seeing her um, very high ratings. I was sick of H&R Block making mistakes and needed someone that I felt could help fix all my tax issues. These type of reviews are basically kind of your marketing copy in some way. Um, you learn a lot about what people say. And if you just go through other sites' reviews, it, you'll understand what are the issues that make people change. A lot of it is responsiveness from their old um, prepare or they got uh, like this person's talking about using TurboTax and how complicated things became, you know, and they wanted a, a tax pro to, to look. And, you know, what you'll see here is that these things um, really do kind of tell the story of what you are doing. And they really validate to a third party that, you know, this professional, this accountant really knows what they're talking about. And I think this is something that uh, when we talk to our own professionals, you know, a lot of them are very afraid. Yes, does Yelp sometimes suppress uh, reviews, positive reviews? Yes, they do because they have an algorithm just like Google. And if they believe that the review is not valid or if it's uh, the reviews are coming from the same IP addresses, things like that, they will um, hide or suppress them. But on the overall, if you take this as a strategy to... Uh, grow your firm, you will be shocked uh, by the volume. You know, here's uh, 81 leads, 84 leads from uh, to the website, and a lot of this traffic to this particular professional came uh, because of all the positive reviews. And then when we put these reviews uh, onto the website themselves, you can embed whether it be Yelp or um, and let's just actually go to this client site.
uh, let's see here. So you also see she has a Google Plus page here. Um, here's her website. And then here's the Yelp listings with uh, some reviews. But if you go to this client's site, you'll notice that the reviews are very prominent um, for people then to click in and, and be able to see what people are think, talking about them. So embedding the reviews, embedding them from sources that are considered trustworthy, honest reviews are what matters. So if you, if you think you can just throw a bunch of testimonials on, those are different than what actually reviews do. It's, it's people trust that it is an actual you know, third-party endorsement of what you're doing. And now 70% of people trust or believe in what they read on these online reviews. It is making buyer decisions every day. So if you dominate page one of Google and you dominate reviews, you know, honestly, most people will stop looking and, and they will call you and become clients. As long as you're responsive, you know, most likely you're going to get them as a new client. So one of the big questions is, okay, now that I, I buy in that reviews are important, how exactly do I generate more positive reviews and how do I protect myself from negative reviews? So the first thing I want to address really is the whole concept of negative reviews. Um, Occasionally, you'll have a bad experience with the client, whether it be fair or not, and they give you two stars, one stars. Um, you know, they have the opportunity to vent and voice their um, experience, at least from their point of view, on any of the major you know review sites. So, if they do that, you do have the ability to uh, respond um, through Yelp. Uh, you can also comment. Uh, to their review. So basically, if a competitor leaves a review and it's not even a client of yours, you can uh, go ahead and add that to the review and a response uh, within the review itself. And what this does is it gives you a little more protection. But the honest reality is, is people actually like to see one or bad, you know, one or two bad reviews, perhaps, because it kind of validates that um, that the other reviews are all legit. It's not just somebody going in there and paying a bunch of people to review them. Uh, regardless of how you think about it. The, the consumer behavior, or at least the uh, psychology side of it, is basically they look at reviews. The higher your rating, the more likely that, that you're going to be picked. So how do I now take advantage of this um, and drive more reviews? So Yelp has a bunch of quote-unquote rules. Uh, they uh, look out for in their IP. Uh, you know, are reviews coming from the same IP address, things like that? If you had an iPad in the office and you're asking for reviews, there's ways that that reviews can be uh, suppressed regardless. Um, they also say you're not supposed to proactively go out and ask for them. I, I, I don't believe in that at all. I believe that you should have the ability, um, and what we do is we have a kind of a template. I don't have links here to the actual review sites, but we have a template with some copy that uh, you can select a group of clients that you feel uh, that you are most comfortable with, or you can send it to your entire client base. And basically it's kind of saying, as you know, our practice is built primarily by referrals, um, you know, in today's uh, review sites uh, matter, and um, you know, would you have a few minutes to leave a review? So, uh, whether it be uh, Yelp, where someone can leave a review, um, a site like TaxBuzz, where they can leave a review, that this is a little more comprehensive type of review, uh, and perhaps uh, a little more uh, useful as far as embedding it onto your site. But regardless, being proactive to um, get reviews that people will, um, you know, look at when they're uh, talking about or thinking about hiring you. It's going to validate uh, the entire buyer experience. It's going to make it a much more uh, promising uh, conversion rate for you. So those are just some general ideas on how to get more reviews. But I would just say be proactive. You know, include ask for them in the lobby. Um, Email clients, ask for them by, uh, you know, people that are a little closer, you know, friendly colleagues type. Um, and, you know, all they need to do is spend some time. So the major sites you care about for reviews are Yelp, Google Plus, and TaxBuzz. Any of those would really help you. We started this discussion breaking down how the Google search results page works and kind of the real estate that's there. And we spent some time on the Google Plus uh, business listing section, and this is basically the mapping with the, the little red flags uh, that are shown on all search results. Now, as you can see, the real estate itself is very large as far as the proximity to the top of the page. And if you did any heat map um, analysis of the way eyeballs work, it basically this section here on the top left of uh, the Google search results is where most people look. Their eyes do come here to the top uh, right and then a little bit down here to the middle. But basically, if you're not in this real estate here, the, the above the fold section of the browser, um, the chances of you being found are going to be less and less. So that is why spending the time to 
make sure you have a claimed Google Plus page, making sure that you have content being added to uh, your Google Plus page, getting reviews on your Google Plus page, making sure that your name, address, and phone number on your Google Plus page are the exact same as they are on your website and any other directory listings you have are all elements on how this works. So uh, I have a, uh, a search ranking factor that Moz publishes that I usually uh, like to share with clients so they get a general idea of the, the scientific side of it. Um, basically, if you break down uh, the, the local search ranking factor results, and this is kind of a survey based on everyone in the industry, you're going to notice some interesting things that you may be neglecting and not even think about, it, again, that are very simple for you to work on that can really increase your uh, positioning of your brand online. So one of them here is social signals. That is the whole Google+, Plus, Facebook likes, Twitter followers, etc. So it's a small percentage, but when you're competing with other firms, that small percentage, if you're doing it, um, is a differentiator. And not only that, you're also out there connecting and engaging with clients, which builds kind of your reputation anyways. But you'll see here social signals around 6%, review signals 10%, which is uh, obviously what we talked about previously. But uh, the idea of these external location signals, the NAP listing citation, so again, name, address, phone, uh, being consistent across all of your properties. So when I say properties, that means your Yelp listing, the way you're listed in the yellow pages, switchboard.com, uh, if you're on patch.com, any of these sites, there's you know 50 major ones now that uh, are published that people use their mobile devices to get to. They don't even go through Google anymore. But all of these, the more consistent your actual firm information is, uh, the exact same way the word avenue is spelled out, the exact same way your firm name is spelled out, the more consistent it is, the more likely that your information is uh, accurate. So meaning there's a lot of bad data on the internet and uh, the search engines all use this as a factor when they are ranking you. So I'm going to go back kind of to the Google uh, Plus side. I think just showing you the results, you already see, hey, if you're at page one and then you roll over it and then the information about you is there, this almost circumvents your website at times. People can go and read about you, contact you directly. Um, and then you'll see the people that have high G Plus or Google Plus listings, usually their website is linked, ranked very high and they have Yelp uh, reviews. So these are all these elements that we're talking about in today's webcast proving you know, live here um, on Google exactly what we're talking about, how it works, and how effectively it is. So uh, if you go into a Google Plus page, one of the things that is important, you don't even have to have that many followers yet because Google Plus is not as popular as Facebook, but guess who owns Google Plus? Obviously Google. So the more content that you're adding here, um, it kind of shows uh, you engaging with clients. It, uh, it shows it up as far as the amount of content you're providing, and it kind of shows your expertise. These factors, by having your blog being shared um, on your Google Plus page, will be elements that are going to make this work as well. So kind of the takeaways from this is you need to make sure that all of your properties are consistent. You need to make sure that you are pushing content to social media sites and uh, make sure that everything is running on a kind of a timely basis. You don't want to have a, a dinosaur site by any chance. You want uh, content to be sent out there several times a week. I hope this review of how the search engine results work and where the, uh, the different listings are placed on the search engine results has helped you as you plan for this upcoming tax season. What we have found for our clients is the changes in Google, the more competition for mobile devices, has made it more important than ever that clients understand that the local search results, this, the real estate is limited. And to be on the top of page one uh, through the various properties, whether it be Google+, Plus, whether it be in uh, directory consolidator sites like Yelp or TaxBuzz, um, or just having a properly optimized website, it is becoming more and more difficult for clients. So understanding what the main issues are and focusing your time on the elements that we picked up on today really can make a, a huge difference on the way your marketing results go. I can't say it enough how important reviews are in the clients of ours and, and some of the solutions we put in place on how many leads uh, these people are receiving through their websites, through the phone, 
uh, it really makes a huge difference and it makes for a very healthy environment if you're trying to build your firm. If you have any questions uh, of us, please give us a call at 800-442-2477, extension 3, or visit our website at clientwise.com, and we'll love to uh, consult with you and kind of go over any of the elements uh, or talking points that we had today. Thank you.